What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Holy Guacamole. As always, I am your host, Zach Cronin, and today we are going to be talking about Joel Embiid's 70-point game that he had on Monday night against the San Antonio Spurs. Obviously, 70 points, 24-41 shooting, 21 of 23 from the free throw line. Only attempted two threes in that game as well. Added 18 rebounds, five assists, and of course, Philadelphia got themselves the W. This was a dominant performance i don't think there's an adjective to describe it other than that heading into the game greg popovich said that the spurs were going to quote unquote hammer and beat ass that got turned into a graphic and i'm not sure i've ever seen something turn to milk as quickly as that did just another thing on the mb performance itself i don't want to mention these two guys together but i felt that what we saw from mb was a very modern day Wilt Chamberlain esque performance. He did almost all of his damage exclusively within 15 feet. It was surreal the ass beating he gave to everybody on the Spurs. Victor Wembenyama, Zach Collins got it particularly bad as well. Jeremy Sohan was involved in a few possessions that he just got straight embarrassed. And I think it really highlights just how in his own class Joel Embiid is like we we've talked about Giannis being the most dominant player in the NBA right now physically but I think Joel Embiid is in that category he's physical he's big he's strong but he's got a ton of finesse and his bag is getting wider and wider and deeper and deeper at this point I don't really see how you could mention anybody else for Joel Embiid obviously Nikola Jokic is going to be in the conversation SGA is going to be in the conversation as well. Giannis has a chance to be a finalist. But watching it at this moment right now, I think that Embiid should be the front runner for the MVP. I think the only thing that's going to jeopardize it is his health because he's already on the cusp of missing the 65 game minimum. But enough yapping. We're going to go ahead and get into the video. This is not just going to be me chit chatting throughout the whole thing. No, I want to do a shot make by shot make breakdown and just talk to you guys through how he got these. 70 points obviously free throws excluded because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna commentate over a free throw that's fucking silly so without further ado let's get into this Wemby did his absolute best to hang with mb throughout this game but he's a rookie he's at an immediate disadvantage regardless of all of the physical tools that he has just watch how mb lulls him to sleep going left right left and then stepping into this elbow jump shot there are multiple shots from this area that Joel Embiid made. The free throw line, the elbow extended area, 15, 16 feet. Adding that into his game has made him a much improved scorer. And then, of course, obviously having that translate to his, his efficiency from the free throw line and his improving accuracy from the three-point line as well. There's just, you're in no man's land as a defender. You don't have anywhere to force him it's almost like you're guarding a wing or a guard someone who can handle the ball attack from the perimeter play in the mid-range get to the basket and on top of that Joel Embiid is going to bully you in the post we have once again another mid-range jumper I think that Embiid is trying to find his rhythm from outside of the paint and try to pull Wemby away from the basket because even though Wemby is a rookie Embiid still understands that he's got the height disadvantage and the length disadvantage as well. So this is him just trying to goad Wemby into taking away the outside shot. So that way it makes things easier for him when he gets into the post. But watch how Embiid, that little hesitation forces Wemby to no longer be square. It forces him to take a step back, thereby his top half is leaning forward, which allows Embiid to get the clean shot off watch so just a little little hesitation slight step back and it's still a very solid contest from Wemby but it just it gets to a point where it doesn't matter how proficient you are as a defender you're just not going to be able to make these guys miss shots sometimes this is just a grown man move by Joel Embiid uh, the, the, he could have ran this all game I'm I'm not kidding he could have had 40 shot attempts doing what he's about to do here he just moves Wemby, establishes position, 
puts him on his hip, catches the catches the entry pass, and finishes. There's also no one over here on the backside to help. So if you're Nick Batum, you just throw this over the top of the defense, catches, and really there's nothing that San Antonio is going to be able to do to stop that. There are really only a handful of guys in the entire NBA that are going to be able to stop that. Uh, Brooke Lopez, Al Horford, guys like that. No one on the Spurs is taking that pass away or taking that shot attempt away, pardon me. What we have here, just two bigs playing physically. I want to give a shout out to Zach Collins, who is absolutely fighting his ass off. This is like a single mercenary trying to take on the entire might of the Roman army. They're looking for this entry pass right here. It's cut off because Zach Collins is trying to establish position in the front. However, Jeremy Sohan is on the backside as well. So what does MB do? Recognizes that he has to find position elsewhere. If you're getting, if you're taken away going baseline, what are you going to do? You're going to spin off, flash middle. Tyrese Maxey moves the ball to Nick Batum, who's able to deliver an easier entry pass. And it's just, it's one-on-one -on -one at that point. It's an and one. You know, there was some jostling going on. They were kind of arm wrestling. On, they, were, they were arm wrestling on the paint. Sometimes in the paint, sometimes that's a foul. Sometimes it's not. I do prefer it not to be a foul because if both guys are fouling, what's what's the difference? Nobody's at a clear, no one's at a clear advantage. This is nothing more than MB just dominating the smaller Spurs. There is no height on the floor for them right now. They have minimal size. Zach Collins is, I think, like 6'10 or so, but he doesn't, he's not an interior presence. It would take him and Jeremy Sohan to box out Embiid. So Embiid doubles, kicks it to Nick Batum, right past Nick Batum, fires up an open three, brick, rebound one, missed, rebound two, missed, and finally he finishes with a layup. Just hustling on the boards. The evolution of the seven-footer in the modern NBA is something to behold. It's absolutely mesmerizing. This is your seven-foot, 260-pound center running the fast break by himself, doing a through the leg crossover and stepping into an elbow jumper. How do you, you, you cannot defend this. There's simply nothing that Zach Collins can do. I mean, he's playing all right defense. Yeah, there's a little bit of space here, but you're not going to press Joel Embiid because he's just going to blow by you. So again, you're in no man's land as a defender. They're even like effectively double teaming Joel Embiid. If they wanted to, Korkmaz, and Korkmaz does, Cut here, unfortunately, so does Tobias Harris, so the lane gets a little clogged. But look at this. Just one, two, impeccable footwork. That's another thing that makes Joel Embiid so unstoppable is how agile he is, how deft he is, how graceful he is. That, of course, dates back to his soccer background. But if you're, if you're able to get your feet in the position where you want them to be, everything else is going to fall into place because beyond that, it's just... Repetition. We get a little high pick and roll action here with Tobias Harris and Forkan Korkmaz. And B's just clearing out, trying to find, trying to establish position in the paint. There's no way that Korkmaz gets him the ball. Right here, Doug McDermott is over the top. Zach Collins is battling with him. So MB kind of is just hanging out. Discords Collins on the rebound. This is also not great rebounding position by San Antonio. Of course, we have. Fucking my man under the basket right here doing <laughs> doing uppies. <laughs> so yeah, this is e this is just this is just easy business. Sometimes you're playing a basketball game, whether it's you, whether it's an NBA player, and there are nights where things just go your way. And this is one of those instances with Joe and Limby. High pick and roll with him and Corkmaz. We haven't seen a lot of this yet. Is wide open. Corkmaz delivers. The pass, Doug McDermott does a great job sprinting over, cutting it off. Double team him and Jetty Osman. However, this double team leaves all of this space along the baseline. What does MB do? He takes it. He just bullies his way into the paint. Zach Collins helps, puts a body on him, and they force him into a circus shot that he makes. He's not even looking at the basket. And listen, this is good defense. By San Antonio. They let him, you know, Embiid gets the step. However, Zach Collins is already in the paint getting ready to help his teammates. And it's good help. He puts a body on him. He's physical. But it's just, it was just one of those nights. It's clear 
that the Spurs want to double team Joel Embiid. However, when you double team, the double teams have to be fast and they have to be intense. You cannot have a half speed double team. So Philly recovers this loose ball. Embiid is matched up with Wemby. Catches, looks opposite, fakes a pass. Nobody falls for it. It's now one on one with Sohan covering the cutter. Okay, cutter gets through. He's passed off to, I believe this is Julian Champagny. And then Sohan. He, tr- he, like, trots over to this double. No. You, you can't do that. You're allowing Embiid to get a clean look at the basket. I know that Wemby is 19 feet tall, but still. Embiid is an MVP caliber player. The slightest amount of space he has, he's going to capitalize on. So this needs to be immediate. Immediate. Or you, can, or, you know, even have Trey Jones come and just pass Oubre off over here to Sohan. But this is just... And this is good defensive positioning by Wemby as well. He's lower than Embiid. Remember, the low man wins in defense. He's lower than Embiid. He's square. He's shading him into the middle of the defense, although I'm not so sure if that's something I'd do. I'd maybe have Wemby play a little bit more square. But if you know that you're getting the double from this side, you might as well just just take it. His hands are active, but it's just... There's really, like, no analysis that I could do on a bunch of these shots. It's really just Embiid taking shots that he knows he can make. And this is just, I'm bigger than you. Embiid is forced into a miss. A very makeable shot by him, actually. Um, Does look a little off balance here, so I think that's what happened. But Wemby is leaking out. And I know, I just, I know for a fact that Greg Popovich reamed him on this. Why are you leaking out when your man is the closest man to the basket? Put a body on him. You're the only big on the floor right now, Wemby. You are responsible for ending the possession by securing that rebound. This, you did a great job forcing your man into a miss. And now, it's four on four. It's four on four, and Joel Embiid is matched up with Jeremy Sohan. This is an unwinnable position. This is, uh, this is unwinnable. Good recovery by Sohan as well to force Embiid into another miss, but there's still nobody there to secure the rebound. Just poor defensive awareness by Wemby. Another high pick and roll, this time with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid. 9.2 seconds left in the, in the first half. Up by two. Put the ball in your hands of your two best players. West Ham create. And Embiid comes up, sets a fake screen, slips. Wemby, Wemby, this is pitch and catch, bro. This is pitch and catch. This is too much space for Embiid, who is already into his motion before Wemby's hand is up. And just not a not great pick and roll defense <clears throat> here by Wemby. And it, it's, it's even more confounding. Because there was no screen set here. There was no screen. I understand that you're trying to help. But like drop. Do something. Drop a little farther. I would say. Maybe that's the. Maybe that is. Maybe that's not the right thing to do in this scenario. But he's kind of just like. He's kind of just standing around. And then he's he's already turning. So it's impossible for him to recover. Just very, Just not that great of a possession to end the first half. Beyond that, however, I feel that Wemby did probably everything he could, at least in the first half, to stop Joel Embiid. I don't think that anybody would stop him tonight. Maybe the only person would be Bill Russell, um, maybe Kareem, maybe Tim Duncan, but you're talking about three of the greatest defensive players to ever play basketball. I don't think that Wemby should be discouraged by this by this performance even though he was on the receiving end of a lot of these baskets. In a lot of these situations, there's simply nothing that you're able to do. This isn't Wemby being bad at defense as much as it is Joel Embiid being an elite offensive player. So Embiid establishes position on the el- in the on the elbow extended. Okay, Wemby comes out 
Again, good defensive positioning here. Wemby is lower than Embiid. Remember, the low man wins. If you watch any ball handler, Devin Booker, Kyrie Irving, whomever it is, <clears throat> whenever they drive, they are always lower than their defender. They are like at hip level almost. There's this picture circulating around somewhere on Instagram of Devin Booker being guarded by somebody on the Celtics, and he is below his man's waist. Wemby is preventing that blow by with this defense. However, he's giving up probably like 40 pounds on Embiid, and he just gets bullied, man. A shoulder, drop step, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing you can do about that. The only way that's stopping is if Sohan blitzes right away. Once this ball is caught by Embiid, Sohan has to come and force something. He has to force Embiid to spin baseline. He has to force a pass out to Nick Batum, something like that. You're just letting, you're letting your rookie hang out to dry. I really like Wemby's defensive effort on these plays outside of that one pick and roll that I kind of blasted him a little bit. I feel watching this game that Wemby legitimately felt that he could slow down Joel Embiid. He looked at himself in the mirror that morning and said, I'm leading the NBA in blocks per game. I'm already one of the best interior defenders the NBA has to offer. I can take this challenge. I respect that confidence. And Wemby had a great game himself. I think finished with 32 on 10 of 19. But sometimes you just get beat. It's hard to beat great individual offense in the NBA. And that's what this is. Watch Wemby on this possession. Plays, again, solid defense on Embiid. The contest is a little weird. He is turned. I definitely do not like him being basically <laughs> starting to run backwards already because although Embiid settled for a pull-up jumper, Embiid could have easily crossed over and blown by him and potentially have gotten an N1 because he is leaning here. He's leaning. His hips are open. Not great defensive positioning. But he recovers. He recovers, forces Embiid into a 15-foot pull-up. Decent contest. But again, it's just, it's too much. This is dominant big man stuff. Right here. Old school establishing positioning on the block. Philly is looking like they're in a little bit of a horn set right here. You have Tobias Harris crossing the defense, effectively trying to create a one-on-one -on -one with Embiid and Wemby on the weak side on Philly's. Weak side, that is. Establish, pass to Batum. Two feet in the paint. Push it, uh, just pushes Wemby out of the way. And then shoulder, drop step, all without taking a dribble. No dribble necessary. This is how the bigs of the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, this is Shaq-type shit right here. Watch it one more time. How easily he creates positioning. Notice that Wemby is a little bit higher than Embiid. Their heads are not level. Their hips are not level. Embiid is lower. He's got all the strength here. I mean, this is a 260-pound guy just moving Wemby out of the way. Similar type play. Batum sets a screen on Tyrese Maxey. Maxey retreats here. I'm wondering if it would have been better if he just kept, if he just kept pushing because then you have Harris in the corner. You have Embiid. At the free throw line, I think at this point, they are trying to play through MB. It's working for them. It's the opposite of what happened with Carl Towns and his 60-point game, where all of his shots in the second half seemed forced. Embiid and the Sixers are playing within their offense because Embiid is the focal point of their offense. So he pulls out, resets, throws it back to Batum, who immediately flings it to Embiid, who has just enough space to catch this pass. And it misses once, misses again, uh, but ultimately finishes the possession. And this is what you want from your young center. You want him to try to wear out the opposing big as much as he can. Forcing Embiid to reestablish position once or twice in a possession will accumulate over the course of a game, except not in this game, because again, all of the all of the rules of basketball evaporate when you're talking about like a 50, 60, 70 point performance. But on a normal night, like this is what you want to see from Wemby. 
and then maybe a little bit more help over here. However, you're not leaving Kelly Oubre wide open in the corner, so I understand why Champagny is kind of just letting, letting Embiid work here. Also, very good pass by Nick Batum. I don't think... I mean, I don't want to say that. Like, listen, Batum has been passing well for the majority of his career. It's like watching a seven-foot Kobe Bryant somehow. Or a seven-foot Carmelo Anthony. Embiid in the triple threat, I don't think we've ever seen anything like it at the center position before. No disrespect to Hakeem Olajuwon, who is the only guy who immediately comes to mind in that regard. But he's just... He punishes defenders without taking a dribble. Seeing that from someone who's playing outside of the paint is very, very rare. A ball-dominant player playing outside of the paint. So we have another pick and roll with him and Maxi. Good screen here. Good recovery by San Antonio as well. I would say Embiid isn't completely open. But it's obvious here that they are not switching anything at all. So Maxi... Let, you know what? I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna let it fucking play for you guys, so you can so we can appreciate this greatness together. He's just hanging out, gathers jab step, opens up Wemby, and that is all he needs to get this shot off. When you're guarding a superstar, the slightest movement on your end, the slightest reaction, is all they need to capitalize. I'm gonna try to pause it right before the jab step. So he gathers immediately into his one two. He's in perfect position. Wemby also, good position. Hands are up. He's low. They're at about the same level right here. But then watch Wemby's left hand. He, he falls for this jab step. All Embiid is looking to do in that situation is move Wemby's hand. Because those mittens are the only threat to Embiid on that shot. Whether it's a block, whether it is a strip, that's what he's trying to get rid of. He doesn't need to shed Wemby as a defender as a whole. He just needs to get those hands out of his shooting pocket. Down the stretch, another, not down the stretch of the third quarter, my apologies, another Embiid Maxi pick and roll, now being guarded by Zach Collins. So Embiid, not really, not open here because Sohan is coming up to cut off that. He's, Sohan is creeping up to cut off the pass to Embiid, so Maxi is going to dish it to Nick Batum, but nobody is helping Sohan, which leaves Embiid effectively wide open. Like, this is a lob pass. And a finish over Keldon Johnson. It's just good. It's, this is just good, basic offensive execution. This is what championship teams do to lesser opponents. I know that this wasn't a blowout by Philly, but this is how you win games. Just take what the defense gives you. They didn't have, Joel Embiid did not have to hunt for these 70 points. They just came in the flow of the offense. This is in the flow of the offense right here. Getting a lob off of a cut after your point guard dishes to the open guy. It's easy. It's easy basketball for an elite team like this. The Spurs are shifted. Pass goes. To Maxi immediately swings it, not immediately, but swings it to Korkmaz, who finds the who finds Embiid in the middle. A little bit of a little bit of a shit pass. Sohan does a nice job sliding down, by the way, which is what you want from whoever's at the top of your zone. Tips it, but Embiid gathers, spins like this is just GG. You you can't, you're not doing anything to stop that. The best way to stop that is to just run a tighter zone which obviously is a lot which obviously is super easy for me to say from my computer chair i don't know if nba players like actually take certain matchups as disrespect but it seems to me that mb knows zach collins has no business guarding him whereas he feels differently about wemby because he actually works when being defended by Wemby. Is Zach Collins a great defender? No. Is he the worst defender in the NBA? No. But off of this pick and roll, Embiid catches and like locks eyes with him. He doesn't pump. He doesn't jab. He doesn't fake pass. He does a light jab step, but nothing crazy. And he just shoots over Zach Collins. Now he's also partially doing that 
because he has the he has the physical advantage over Colin, so he can just elevate over him. So he gets the outlet. Now notice <clears throat> fucking Christ. Notice something about the Spurs. Zach Collins is fronting and beat in the post. That's generally how you want to play when matched up against a bigger defender in the paint. The issue is that you can't front or you shouldn't be fronting when you have no help on the backside. If you notice here, every spur is above the free throw line. One, two, three, four, and five. All Korkmaz has to do to get this bucket is throw the ball over the top of the defense. It's like throwing a fade to your receiver in the end zone. Embiid may not have position, but by not having position, he has position because he could just catch the ball over the shoulder. And Korkmaz like, this is not the greatest pass, but he catches it for an easy layup. In a perfect world, that pass is going to be more like towards the middle of the paint and deep so that way MB can just get it on the right side and go but it, it's effectively the same thing like this is just this is just this is high basketball IQ stuff but doing what you're supposed to do as a big reading the reading the floor how you're supposed to read it as a guard okay so we're just getting okay yeah so this is yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna watch I'm I'm mind blown. I've been watching Embiid play at an MVP level for three, four years now, whatever it is. I'm still amazed at his footwork. Just watch his feet on this possession alone. He's always where he wants to be. Perfect pivot right into a one-two. It's, oh my God, dude. I know it's fundamentals. I know he should be doing these things as an elite player, but it's not necessarily that. It's, I know it's fundamentals. I know it's him he should be doing these things as, as an elite player, but it's him also being seven foot and 260 pounds. That's what does it for me. When I see JJ Redick have great footwork, when I see Clay Thompson have great footwork, I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's their job. They're guards, they're shooters, they're wings. But a seven footer to have this level of dexterity on the perimeter, man, it is, it is historic. It's historic. He's gone to this move at least four or five times. The catch at the free throw line with the jab step to his right. And it's worked like every time. He's done it to everyone who's guarded him. Zach Collins, Wemby, Sohan. And this is all he needs to get that shot up. He just needs the defender to lean one way a little bit and it's wraps. Especially, especially when he has the mismatch. Like when he does against Sohan, like when he does against Zach Collins here, we once again have another pick and roll. I mean, this is the Phil this is the Philadelphia 76ers offense. And these are easy shots. These are shots that Embiid has been taking and making all game long. They're in rhythm, they're in confidence. He's not seeing an abundance of pressure. He's effectively playing one on one. Like he's in a workout almost. A little defense to offense. He's once again running the fast break. I mean, this guy is the MVP. He's the MVP right now. <laughs> you can't stop that, bro. Video not available. That's my favorite. This is my favorite thing. I think that the takeaway here is Joe Ellenbeat is fucking, is fucking ridiculous. Monday night, there was, uh, he had 70. Carl Anthony Towns had 62. Kevin Durant had 40, 45 or 43 or something like that. You had like 68 points from Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Huge offensive nights all across the NBA on the anniversary of Kobe's 81-point game. And Embiid's looked the easiest. 20, 24 of 41 from the field. A bunch of those shots were missed, or a handful of those misses were missed putbacks. And again, I think the one reason that he was so effective in this game was that he established himself early at the free throw line in the paint. And from that point on, he didn't have to settle for any freeze. They were there if he so wanted to take them. But I think that he knew he had the advantage against everybody 
on the Spurs. I don't imagine him ever putting up, you know, 65 or 70 points against an elite defense like Boston. But a lot of the things that he was doing in this game will translate later on in the season into the playoffs. At the free throw line, jab step pull up. That is a move that is in his repertoire. It is a legitimate go-to move. And you combine that with how he's able to establish position in the post, how he's able to step out the three if he wants to, how he's able to run the break in transition. This game was everything that Joel Embiid does well, just on a thousand. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Thank you all so very much for coming to hang out with me today. Everything I'm associated with is down in the description box below. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Drop a comment as well. It really helps out with the algorithm. If you do any of those three things, you will become my new favorite person. And with that, I will see y'all in the next one.